just these Korean moms and grandmas just like going leaf by leaf just so their family has some kimchi throughout the year. It really is a labor of love. That's why it takes a couple days. It takes a weekend. And you probably haven't gotten highlights, but <laughs> they go through layer of layer. Like what if I have gotten highlights? Yes. I was like, girl, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, they do. It's kind of like highlights. And I would know. Hi, I'm uh, Dookie Hong, and uh, I'm gonna do a kimchi recipe today. Kimchi is a preference thing. I feel like the recipe that we have is a guidelines. It's not a quick one because it takes time to ferment, so time is an ingredient here too, but uh, it's very simple though. There's only a few ingredients that's kind of out there. This right here, we're using uh, shrimp paste, so it's just salted shrimp that you just keep in a jar and you just let it ferment. Uh, this right here is uh, gochugaru or Korean chili pepper powder. And then we have uh, anchovy sauce or fish sauce, you can use whatever. So those three is like, it's a lot of spice, a lot of salt. Definitely the chili pepper powder, salted shrimp, I only see that in like Asian marts. And then anchovy sauce is probably something that you have to order especially, yeah. So other than that, it's easy to make. Uh, and then kind of the usual suspects of Asian in cuisine, garlic, ginger, some scallions. Asian pears for some natural sweetness and daikon radish, uh, some carrots. So I'm gonna just start with the brining process of it, or salting it, right? There's two different ways. One is dry brine, the other one is wet. Traditionally, it's uh, Napa cabbage is used, so... The first way that a lot of people do is the wet brining, or the wet way, is just dunk it in like a salt and water solution. I like mine kind of in the 14 parts to one, so 14 parts water, one part salt. Uh, kosher salt works fine, sea salt works great. I would say the difference between good kimchi and kind of great kimchi is this process right here. This, you just let it soak. And then the next way is just simply salting it. This is a coarse sea salt that is used in kimchi a lot. So you just grab a handful and just kind of go into Kind of what I do also to help the salt stick, you wet it a little bit. So you kind of wash it obviously, and then it sticks. And then this, you just let it go. Anywhere from six to eight hours, uh, best would be overnight. Room temp is best, it'll ferment a lot faster too. What we do with kimchi is we make a paste, right? That's the seasoning for it. So that iconic kind of bright red color is kind of what we're going for. Here's some Asian pears. I love using Asian pears. So we just do a little bit of veggies. I do some scallions, some daikons. These are all veggies that are gonna go into the paste. It'll, it'll aid with flavor also. We take our kimchi very seriously. It's like a family event. So we like, it like shut down the house, people don't go to work, like we're making kimchi that day because they make it for the rest of the year. You know, every household kind of has their own recipe, which I think is kind of awesome. Um, every Korean thinks their mom's kimchi is the best. Uh, this right here is uh, gochugaru or Korean chili pepper powder. We do some fish sauce, some salted shrimp, and all that. Ginger, mince up some ginger. Professionally, I started cooking in 15 when I was in high school. I just knew the right people, I guess. My baseball coach was actually partners with Drew Neoporn, the guys that started Nobu, Tribeca Grill, the iconic Montreche. I didn't know that, obviously. And I was friends with his son, and, he, and I guess he caught wind that I was kind of somewhat interested in cooking. I'm just adding some water because it's a little dry. Because you do want it to be a little bit of a paste. And then he was like, dude, if you want to work in the kitchen, like, I have this restaurant that's opening up come by if you like it, great. So that was it. It's great because you end school at like three o'clock. You take a bus, a subway, and then you're in Tribeca at like five o'clock, which is perfect for uh, dinner time. And yeah, and then I'll stay till like 11 and then go back and just do it again. It was a lot cooler than school. This is the paste that we're gonna work with to season the actual fermented cabbage. If you don't want your hand to be orange, you should use a glove. That's just a tip. You're welcome. Right here we have both the cabbages. One is dry brined, uh, the other one is wet. This has been brining for about a day, so overnight is best, and you'll kind of it'll yield this kind of product. And it's all about taste. So you do want to taste your cabbage, right? So you want this to be seasoned, also. Yes, you're adding seasoning, but this is more for like the spiciness, the kick, um, the sweetness. This should be nice and seasoned, like salted cabbage, right? If this is bland, no matter what you do here, it's not, you're not gonna fix it. You kind of do it how Korean's mom do it. See, I should use a glove on the other hand too. <laughs> nice, whatever. So you just kind of go leaf by leaf, right? 
it really is a labor of love. That's why it takes a couple days, it takes a weekend, and just imagine just these Korean moms and grandmas just like going leaf by leaf, but not like one cabbage, like hundreds of these, just so their family has some kimchi throughout the year. You smell the fish sauce, you smell the kind of the chili paste, so this is really potent stuff. I think that's why people hate it, but that's also why people love it. You put this in the fridge, your food will taste or smell like kimchi, and it'll definitely be not pleasant. In Korea, we have like this, like, it's like one of those college dorm fridges, but it's just for kimchi. So this is what it should look like. It should be covered all around, so inside all the layers are, are accounted for, and all that seasoning is gonna go not just on the top or the bottom, but all throughout the layers. So for her, we put it in an unnecessarily fancy ball jar. If you ferment, there's gases that are releasing as it ferments, so you need it to breathe. So what I would do here, don't put the lid on it, put a cheesecloth over it and just like a rubber band, and, because you need to let it breathe, um, or this will explode. And I've seen that happen, which is hilarious. I leave it out, I would say the first three to five days, and then the fridge is fine. So fermenting, there's no hard set rule. If you wanted to eat it just straight as a, as a side dish, maybe two weeks, it, it'll be good. It'll be nice and refreshing. It won't be too crazy funky. If we want to use it in like a cooking application, like a fried rice, you want to ferment it longer. So the kimchi that I have today is probably fermenting for about six months or longer. So you see a lot of good funk. You see the cabbage has wilted even more. So uh, this is kind of what it looks like. A lot of the recipes I have are just good guidelines. Go from there, make it your own.